Exactly right. All right, let's go ahead. We're going live here and let's go ahead and start our Instagram phone. All right, so we are live today. So every Tuesday, now the time zone just changed. So the times of the Tuesday live will change now. So you might want to write this down. If you're inside of our Facebook group here, Sales Revolution, you've got the time. So we're going live right now using StreamYard platforms. So we're going live here on Instagram, my Instagram phone. I love you guys here on Instagram. 500 and almost 579,000 of you run around on there. Follow me now on IG. We're also going live here on my desktop using StreamYard. So we're going live here in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. Almost 100,000 of you in there. That thing is growing fast. Also going live on our YouTube channel, 23,000 new subscribers on that thing here in the last five weeks. That thing's growing. And then we're also going live here in the Facebook business page, 155, 156,000 on that one. We're going live as well, my personal Facebook. Now, today we, hey, what's up everybody on Instagram? Now, today we're going to go over a concept. Well, not even a concept. Today I'm going to train you on how to really get your prospects to to go below the surface okay because you might have the literally best questions on planet earth that a salesperson has ever asked a prospect but unfortunately for you that does not mean the prospect is going to magically want to open up to you and just spill all of their problems and you probably know that don't you so type in me if you ever get prospects when you ask questions that give you vague, generalized, surface level answers. Type in me in the comments. If you're here on Instagram, if you're in the Facebook group here, uh, if you're in LinkedIn, if you're uh, here on YouTube or if you're here in the Facebook business page, type in me when you ask questions, even though you thought they were really good, right? Your prospects just don't really open up to you. They stay surface level with you. And then at the end, what's some of the biggest objections you get? Type them in, in the chats. I want to think it over. I want to keep looking around. I want to compare prices with other vendors if you sell B2B. I need to talk with my spouse if you sell B2C. I need to do more research. I need to talk with my mom, my uncle, my financial advisor, my cousin, Vinny my uncle who lives in a van down by the river, right? There's all these excuses, right? Do you know why? It's because you haven't learned yet how to get your prospect to want to open up to you. That's what we're going to talk about, okay? So when you ask certain questions, I'm going to show you how to probe off of the answers to get the prospect to relive their pain. Now, a lot of times when I do this, so you know, besides our virtual training courses we have for clients, which some of you watch me are probably clients. Some of you, maybe you're not. Maybe you're just running around watching basic reels or something somewhere. I don't know what you're doing or what the hell's going on in your world. But when, when you really start to learn how to uh, probe the right way with the right tone, you're going to notice your prospects just open up. They don't even know what's going on. But sometimes when I train this concept about precision probing, let's say if I do a keynote at some company that's hired us to train all the reps or whatever, I'll have a few people. There'll about be 2,000 people in the audience. I'll have one person that will come up. Her name is usually Karen or Larry or somebody. No offense, Karen or Larry, if that's your name. But some name comes up and they're like, Jeremy, I just feel unethical by getting my prospect to feel pain. I don't like asking questions that cause my prospect to feel pain. Now type in me if you ever have felt that way. And that's okay. Type in me in the comments if you've ever felt that way. Like I just don't like asking questions where my prospects feel pain. Now, can I suggest something to you? Okay. And I want you to and I'll ask you this question. What is the number one emotional driver in a human being in their brain? Remember, I'm a behavioral scientist. I know a little bit about this. What's the number one emotional driver in a human being's brain that causes them to want to change? Type it in the comments. 
what's the number one emotional driver in a human brain in a human being's brain that causes them to want to change well it's pain or the fear of future pain that's why any book you've ever read on sales says what no pain no sale but then they don't actually teach you how to get the prospect to relive the pain it's like a theory well that is true if we cannot help the prospect relive pain or start to fear future pain from happening, like if we sold life insurance policies, right? The prospect feels no need to what? No need to change. And if the prospect feels no need to change, there is no sale. So if we want our prospects to be able to get their problems solved and get where they want to be, what do we have to learn how to do? We have to get them to learn how to emotionally open up, go below the surface and relive their pain and start to feel what the future pain will look and feel like if they don't do anything about solving the problem. That is literally in every industry on planet Earth, even if you sold $500,000 Ferraris. Doesn't solve a problem necessarily unless you're racing, right? You can drive a a 2004 used Honda to get from point A to point B, but it solves a what? An emotional need. Status. I want higher status. I want people around me to see I'm successful. It solves an emotional need. There's no product or service on the planet that's ever been invented where you cannot help the prospect, even if it's a $25,000 purse. I'm not joking. Relive pain or fear future pain by not even having that purse. You just haven't learned the questions and how to use your tone to get them to emotionally open up yet. Okay. Now, if you are brand new, so some of you, I see some of you in the comments say, who the hell are you? I, you're following me. I didn't follow you. So my name is Jeremy Miner. So I'm the founder of seventh level. Okay. Seventh level in case whoever just asked me that, who the hell are you? We are a sales training organization companies and individuals who sell things, products and services come to us and we train them how to use techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. Do you know what I mean by that? Are you 100% sure the questions you've been taught to ask are the right questions for what you sell? Are you 100% sure that you know how to use your tonality to cause your prospects to let their guard down? Are you 100% sure you know how to use your tone and your body language, even if they can't see you, that causes them to emotionally open up and build trust in their mind? Because if you're not, that means you're losing sales that our clients who are in the same industry are selling every single day. I can assure you of that. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to have you do. These are called neuro emotional persuasion questions. So when I talk about NEPQ, that stands for neuro emotional persuasion questions. Okay. That comes from my behavioral science background in college and my uh, study of social dynamics, which is really the study of how society makes changes. What's going on? Why does society believe certain things? Why do they say yes rather than say no? Why do they say no rather than saying yes? What is triggered in their brain that causes fight or flight mode? What is triggered in their brain that triggers curiosity where they want to open up? See, if you don't know how to do these things, you just have a what? A disadvantage for all the salespeople, especially our clients who have actually been trained how to do that. Okay, I can assure you. Now, here's what I'm going to have you do. If you're on the live right now, I want you to go in the comments and post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. I know you guys are all on your phones here. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. I better see hundreds of smash. I better see hundreds of hashtag lives. Okay. There's almost 200 of you here on StreamYard between YouTube and the Facebook group. And there's about 300 of you here on IG. A light crowd today. What's going on? Precision probing must not be important. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live replay, go post hashtag replay. And I'm also going to have you do this. I want you to smash the heart button 
and I'm going to have you smash the like button because what I'm about to train you over the next 20 minutes, I'm training you for, I'm not even charging you, no cost for you today. So you're welcome for that. I could be out here golfing. It's really a nice day in Scottsdale and I'm stuck here in the office here. Half, half of our reps are gone today. I don't know where everybody's at. It must be out golfing or something. All right. So I want you to smash the heart button, smash the like button. I want to see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smashed likes. All right. Now, some of you are like, get the get to the point, Jeremy. What the hell are you doing? Okay. You ready to learn? All right. IG phone. I'm going to put you guys over here. All right. Cam says, go have a nice time later. Jeremy, why don't you preach the gospel? And I go to church. I need to go to church more often. I need to go to church more often. All right. Now, let's talk about it. Why do we use, why do we need to learn precision probing? Okay. And first of all, when, when do we need to use probing questions? Now, hopefully I can change this over here for the IG people here. So when do we need to do this? All right. Now, when do we use probing questions? Because I see some people, especially those of you who just follow me on Reels or you watch my YouTube videos where I train you on basic content, and I see some of your comments and you're like, hey, I asked that probing question and that didn't work. And then my DM team messages you and we find out that you asked the probing question in the first damn minute when there's no trust or credibility. And that's why you're getting crushed because you're watching free basic content where you don't know everything before and after. You don't know the ins and outs. You're seeing a 60 second reel. Good Lord, people. I don't even know what to do with you anymore. All right. So when do you use these? You want to use these primarily in what's called problem awareness questions. Now, if you're one of our clients, that's on module like seven. You know, there's probably a two hour training just on problem awareness questions for tons of different industries. And we're also going to ask them and what are called solution awareness questions, because to build a gap from where they are to where we want to be, we're primarily doing that in our problem awareness questions, sometimes in our situation questions, but then to get them to see what the future looks like once the newfound problems are solved, that's more in solution awareness questions. So while we're asking these questions, we also need to learn from the, some of the answers they tell us when to probe deeper to get them to, like I said, relive their pain or start to feel or see what future pain will look like if the problems stay the same and they don't get what they said they wanted. This is precision probing. Okay, now, why do we want to use NEPQ probing questions? Why? Remember, we want them to relive their pain because pain drives what? Change. Can everybody see that? Pain drives change. If they don't feel pain, they don't relive the pain. They feel no urgency to change. And if they feel no urgency to change, you get what? Objections. Oh my gosh. It's all tied back to you don't know how to build a gap or getting them to relive pain or fear of future pain. That's why they give you objections because they have uncertainty and they don't feel the need to change. There's that word change again. That's all selling is, okay? It also helps them tell themselves why they want to change. Which is more persuasive? You telling the prospect why they need to change or are you getting the prospect to tell themselves why they need to change? Type in the comment. Jeremy, you changed my life, brother. Hey, you're welcome on IG. Hopefully you're one of our clients. If you're not, you'd be up by 300%. Hopefully you're there. All right. Is it more persuasive for us to tell the prospect why we think they should change? Or is it more persuasive to get them to tell themselves why they need to change. Type it in the chat. If we don't know that, I am going to go golf by now because that's pretty obvious, right? Now you're probably asking, yes, get them to tell themselves, but Jeremy, I don't know how. Okay. You might want to pay attention the next 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. That's called self-persuasion. Okay. Now this, the reason why we also want to ask probing questions is because it causes the prospect 
to go below the surface emotionally and open up. Okay. Even fortune 500 CEOs. I always like it when our, our, some of our clients that are in B2B sales say, Jeremy, you just don't understand the people I talk to, the department heads, the CFOs, the CEOs. Oh, they don't want to open up emotionally. They're just all logical people. And I'm like, oh, I hate to tell you, but um, as a behavioral scientist, the way the brain makes decisions is actually, it starts in the emotional side of your brain. You can't even decide to go to the bathroom without your emotional side of your brain starting that decision-making process, just so you're aware, okay? That's just scientific facts. If you're in a car accident and your emotional side of your brain is damaged, you're pretty much a vegetable. You can't decide if you want to go to the bathroom. You can't decide if you want to eat. You can't decide if you want to talk. You literally cannot make any type of decision. So if you're in B2B sales, the humans you talk to make decisions emotionally as well. That's just... I. It's just the science. I don't know what else to say to you. What you should be asking yourself if you're in B2B sales is, I haven't learned yet how to get my prospects to want to emotionally open up. Jeremy, can you train me? And then I'd say, yes, I will train you. Same thing with B2C. It doesn't matter. Business to consumer B2B. In fact, the four industries I sold in during my 17, almost 18 year sales career, two were B2C and two were B2B. Now I'm like the back of my hand. That's why we train 161 different industries right now. Okay, let's go into specific questions. Type in me if you want me to show you some questions and how to probe here. Type in me if you want me to do that. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. Type in me in the comments if you want me to show you some probing questions and how to use them. There's only a few of you. Maybe I should just shut it down. I'm okay with shutting it down. I already know all these. Our clients in your industry know all these too. Well, type in me if you want me to show you back here. You, you better get going. I don't have to do that. I'm not even charging you for it. I'm doing this for free. I better see a bunch of me's. I'm just going to sit here. Sit here till I see a bunch of me's going. I already know these questions. It has no impact on me if you don't learn them. Only has an impact on who? You. Okay, there we go. Now we're starting to get it. All right, there you go. I'll do it for you. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, hopefully on IG, you guys can see this. I'll do my best over here. You guys can see this. Okay, so let us let me give you an example. Okay. Prospect says this. Ah, you know, I'm just, I'm just feeling stressed about X, Y, Z. I'm going to make this very generic because I realize all of you are in different industries. Industries we train but I'm gonna make this as generic as possible. So the prospect gives you an emotion here. Have you ever had a prospect that says, ah, I just, I'm having a lot of tension with X, Y, Z, or I, I feel concerned about A, B, C, or we're just a little bit worried about A, B, and D, or I feel stressed about, well, what do you do then? Now, you want me to show you what to do when they say anything like this from your surface level questions? This is just one, one example of the hundreds of different examples we train you in the virtual training platforms and with our sales trainers all over the world, okay? I just feel stressed about X, Y, Z. I can simply do this. I can repeat back the word, stressed. Now, watch my facial expression, stressed, stressed. And you know what they're gonna do? Well, yeah, what I mean by, and then they start to elaborate. They start to open up. See what I just did there? I can take any word that has to deal with an emotion, stressed, annoyed, frustrated, pressured, tension, anxiety, concerned, worried. I could keep going on and on and on and on. And I can literally just repeat back the word, anxiety, nervous, frustrated. How do you mean by frustrated? Now, See, why would my face, what did my facial expression just communicate to you? What did that communicate to you? Frustrated? I'm what? I'm confused. I'm confused. Why would I want to have a confused tone when I'm probing with an emotional word? Stressed? Why would I want to have a confused tone? Because your tone is how the prospect interprets the intention 
behind the question you just asked. Your tone is how your prospect interprets your intention with everything you say and the questions you ask. So if I'm confused, what does that cause the human brain to do? It causes their brain to automatically say in their brain, oh, he didn't understand what I meant by that. I need to clarify that better. That's literally what the brain just told them. They just reacted. Stressed? Well, yeah. I mean, when I say I'm stressed, like I'm blah, 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 blah. And they start expanding and opening up. That is literally just one little thing there that probably 99% of you never knew. And this is basic stuff I'm showing you here. I love you guys. Very basic. Hey, Shani, one of our very first clients five years ago when we started. Now, I could say this. Oh, how do you, how do you mean by stress? Stress? Oh, hold on. In what way? See, that's another probing question I could use there. Okay, so the prospect, let's say they expand. I say stress, stress, and they say, yeah, just the other day, it happened again when, and what are they doing? They're starting to open up. Now, that doesn't mean you just stop right there. When they just barely started to open up, I want to take them about 10 levels deeper. I want them to relive that pain so much that they are basically begging. I want them to beg you and thank you for you allowing them to send them money, for them to send you money to solve their problems and get them where they want to be. Whereas right now you're begging them. But the problem is who has the problems? Who has the problems? You or the prospect you're talking to? Who has the problems? You or the prospect? The prospect has the problems. Who has a solution to solve the problems? You do. So why are you acting like you got to chase and run after people when they're the ones that have the damn problems that you can solve? You see, you're just thinking your sales is backwards. That's just prospect has the problems. You're the one that has a solution. So stop chasing. I'm going to show you how to get them to chase you and do all the work because they're the ones that have the problems, not you, right? Like when people come to us, when individual salespeople come to us or companies come to us, we're not the ones that have seventh level doesn't have the problems. The individual salesperson has the problem. The company has the problem. We just have the solution to solve it. It's the other way around. Okay. You need to start learning how to do that for what you sell. That's what we train you. Okay. In our virtual training courses. All right. Then I'm going to say, say this. They said, yeah, I just said our day. It happened again when blank, blank, blank. Now here's a probing question I'm going to use for that context. Oh, how, how long has that been going on for? Now, what did my tone just sound like in the chats type in what my tone just sounded like? How long has that been going on for? Oh, how long has that been going on for? What did it sound like? What did it sound like? Shannon, can I come work for seventh level? Well, DM me. We'll send you over for an interview with one of our sales managers. Okay. What did my tone sound like? Concerned. Why would I use a concerned tone that showed empathy? Oh, how long has that been going on for? Remember, my tone is how the prospect interprets why I'm asking. Because the prospect feels I'm concerned, they what? Start to trust you more. They start to emotionally open up. People will not emotionally open up to you unless they what? Trust you. No one's, a prospect will never open up to you if they do not trust you. What I'm training you is how to trigger massive trust where everybody wants to open up to you. They don't even know they're open up to you. They just, it feels so natural. They don't even feel like they were in a sales conversation. They feel like very grateful that you allowed them to pay them, pay you to get them where they want to be. That's what you want to learn. Okay. How long has that been going on for? Now, what does this question also do in this situation? It helps them realize what, how long they've had the damn problem. So if that prospect says, oh, this is, that's been going on for six months. Now the prospect is starting to internalize how long they've had the problem, how long they've had the pain. Is it good for your prospect to start to internalize how long they've had the problem and how long they've had the pain? Is that something you want your prospect to internalize? Yes or no? Yes or no? Probably a damn good thing, I would suggest. If you want to sell a lot more. Okay, now, 
So they say, oh, it's been going on for six months. So, I mean, that's been going on for six months. Has that, has that had a impact on you? Now, can I ask this question right here? Within the first couple of minutes of a sales conversation? No. Do you know why? Because I haven't even started to build a gap. I haven't really built much trust or credibility. This is why these type of probing questions are more in your problem awareness questions when you're building a gap from where they are to where they want to be. If you start asking these type of probing questions before, they're either going to get pissed off and emotionally shut down, or they're just going to give you vague surface level answers. Okay. But notice if I said, so has that had a, is that had a impact on you? If I asked that question before I asked how long it's been going on, or I repeated back the emotional word, it, it would not have landed because I want to give them the milk before I give them the what? The meat. It's easier for them to open up with these first type of questions. Repeat, oh, how do you mean by stress? And how long has that been going on? That's easier for them to open up before I ask the big emotional question here. Do you see the difference? Because if I ask this big emotional probing question here at the beginning, they're like, well, it's not that bad. Okay. So look what I did here. Oh, I'm just feeling some stress about blah, 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 blah. Oh, how do you mean by stress? Well, just the other day it happened again when, but oh, how, how long has that been going on for? Oh, that's been going on for six months. So that's been happening for now. Am I going to say, so how long has this been going on for? No, that's generic. So you need to plug in whatever this is for your industry. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say if I sold, uh, let's say if I sold for a marketing agency, I was just training on this with the, one of our clients a little bit before this, let's say if I sold leads as a marketing agency and I train companies how to advertise better to get higher quality leads. So, I mean, you've been getting these low, these crappy leads for the past six months. Has that, has that had a impact on you? See, I wouldn't say this, that's just generic. I'm plugging in whatever this is. If I'm a marketing agency, this would be maybe be crappy leads. Okay. Whatever it is, it, it just depends on what you sell. Okay. I'm just giving you random examples. Uh, let's say if I sold life insurance, for example, we train tens of thousands in that industry, huge industry force. Let's say if I sold life insurance and let's say they told me that their brother-in-law passed away a couple years ago and that's why they're looking at having more life insurance okay and they said oh i just felt stressed when you know my my brother-in-law george passed away hold, oh well hold on your brother-in-law passed away you guys seem so young what actually happened to him see how i'm concerned well you should be concerned his freaking brother-in-law just passed away you have to be authentic Oh, and he starts to tell me how long, you know, he passed away of a heart attack. Let's just say, oh, he had a heart attack. You guys are so young. I mean, what are you guys in your late forties, early fifties? What happened to his family though? Did they, did they have a lot of coverage or, or what actually happened? See, I'm probing even deeper. What, what actually happened to his family? Now, why would I do that if I sold life insurance? Because I'm helping the prospect, what? Relive the pain of when the brother-in-law passed away and left his family with nothing. Because now that causes the prospect to what? Feel urgency to not have that pain, to not leave his family in that situation. See, pain is good because it drives change. If you cannot help the prospect relive the pain, you will quite literally lose most sales that you could be making. I'm not kidding, like that our clients make every day and they make those sales to solve those problems and get the prospect where they want to be. That's how you have to start viewing selling, not you against the prospect trying to win them over to make money. That's how average people view selling. That's why you don't make that much money. Okay. I could go on and on now. Okay. So then in that, in that example, okay. So how, how, how long ago did that actually happen to him? Uh, so, so, so when he passed away without having the, the coverage for, for, you know, for your sister, did that, did that have a impact on you? 
oh my gosh, you have no idea. Like, oh, what actually, you know, I, or I could lean in and I could say, so when that happened, when he passed away with, without your sister having anything, you know, financially, what did that do to you? Oh my gosh, it just made me feel so sorry for, see, reliving pain. And now he's going to fear the fear of future pain. Okay. See what I'm doing there? Okay. Prospect says, oh, you know, okay. So let's say, so this is, I mean, that's been going on for the past six months. Has that had a, has that had a impact on you? Oh gosh, Jeremy, you have no idea. Well, in what way though? Oh my gosh, Jeremy, you have no idea. In what way? Oh, in what way? See how I'm getting to them to go literally six levels deep emotionally where you're still asking surface level questions. You see the difference? Who do you think is going to get that sale? The person that gets the prospect to open up emotionally six level deep or the, the salesperson just asks surface level questions? I think you know the answer. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm going to show you here. Now, here's one thing I want you to, to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to warn you, okay? This is something you read. Like once you're a client, you learn all this advanced stuff. Here, if, if you're not a client watch, I mean, you're just watching like basic 60 second reels on Instagram because you're not going to know. I mean, that's just a little reel that's edited. You wouldn't know what happened before, after you don't know how to respond, depending on how they react. Quite literally, you're learning 0.0000001% of the training our clients go through here in your industry in our client portals and group training. Same thing if you're just watching some long form videos on YouTube. You're not going to know the ins and outs and nuances. You just, you can't learn that in a 10 minute uh, video on, on YouTube because you don't know how to even apply it to your industry either, which we train all that in the platform. All right. So if you notice that their tonality, their body language, that they have emotionally opened up. Okay. So if you're on the phone, you're going to pay attention to their tonality. Okay. If you can see them, you're going to pay attention to their tone and their body language. And if you see, you feel... And we train you, uh, if you're a client, we train you, you. Like I said, we don't train this on free stuff. It's, it's far more advanced than what I'm showing here. We train you how to read what the prospect means, not just what they're saying. The only way you're ever going to learn that is if you know how to read tonality, which you have to be trained in that. We train you as a client. We don't train that in reels. It's, it'd be far too advanced for reels or long form videos on YouTube. Okay. So once you learn, how to read tonality, listening to what they mean, not just what they said, completely different things. And you learn how to read body language, which we also train you as well. Now, if you if they can't see them, you can't read body language. You're just reading the tone. If you notice that they've emotionally opened up, I can skip all those probing questions I just did and lean in. And I can say, what's that doing to you? I can lean in and say, what's it doing to you? What tone did I just use? What's it doing to you? What's that doing to you? What tone did that just come across as? A what? A concerned tone. Now, why would I have a concerned tone? Somebody asked Facebook user, is reading tonality in NEPQ 2.0? Some of it. Most of it is in our advanced NEPQ 3.0 or advanced inner circle. Whoever asked me that on Facebook, because you have to be trained by me and our sales trainers in small groups, how to read tonality. You cannot, you'll learn some of it in the uh, portal that the 45, the 47 hour portal as a client, you're going to learn some of it, but you can't learn the nuances by just watching me in a portal. That's part of it. You have to learn that in our group trainings with me and our sales trainers at a client, because then they're smaller groups. You're asking us questions and we're role playing with you and showing you what to do. We're showing you exercise to show you how to do it. Okay, now let me show you one more example here. This is an example of precision probing. Now, I'm going to show you right here. Like I said, I'm, this is very basic compared to what we train you in the portal and group training as a client. I'm just going to give you a little nibble right here. You're welcome. You can thank me later because I'm not even charging you for this. Do you want to learn how to help their brain have certainty? Type in me. If you want to learn how to get your prospects brains to have certainty, you ever heard the saying that if a prospect is uncertain, they're not buying. If the prospects uncertain, 
if they're confused, there is no buyer, right? So how do you get them to have complete certainty with their situation, their problems and where they want to be and how your solution is going to get them there? How do you learn how to get them to have complete certainty in their mind? Because when you get the prospect to have complete certainty, guess what? You very rarely even get an objection. It is a myth. When sales trainers tell you the more objections your prospects gives you, the more they're interested. Tell me how that makes any sense. Just tell me, somebody prove me wrong. The more objections you get, the more the prospects interested. Can anybody explain that to me rational? rationally? The more objections you get, somehow the prospects more interested. Well, what about all the lay down sales you got where they had no objections? doesn't make any sense. The more objections you get is because you don't know how to get their brain to have certainty and they're confused and they're uncertainty. They're, they have uncertainty in their mind, which triggers them to give you objections. The more objections you get, the less likely they are to buy because they are less certain. Stop buying into the sales mess. I promise you, you are losing sales because you don't understand. You're just you're just accepting what anybody tells you without any evidence, okay? The more objections you get, the less likely they will buy because they don't have certainty. Now, whose job is it to get the prospect to have certainty in their mind? Your job as the salesperson. Or if you own the company or you're the sales manager, it's your job to train your salespeople how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you can reach out to us. Okay. That's why companies and people come to us. Now I'm going to show you two examples on how to do this. I'm going to show you, this is the exact same question as this question right here. This is the exact same probing question, but literally word for word, this right here is the exact probing question. Look at it. If you're on IG, Look at, read it. Is that the exact same question with the words? Type in me if that's the exact same question. Why is this so important to you now? Look below. Why is this so important to you now? Why is this? Why is this so? Yep. Why is this so important to you now? Now, I'm going to show you when I ask this question, I'm going to show you to ask it two different ways where it's going to emphasize two different thoughts completely different thoughts in your prospect's brain. This is what precision probing is. Okay. So the prospect tells you something like, oh, I, uh, you know, I want to have a better, you know, let's say I want to lose weight if you sold fitness or, you know, we're worried, uh, you know, we need to have a, you know, a, a, we need to have better X, Y, Z because we're having some new account issues. We're having some fraud issues in our department. If you sold cybersecurity, I mean, I could, do this for any industry on here. We train all your industries. I'm just throwing out. So I'm going to keep this purposely generic. So they tell you something that they want. I'm simply going to say, so why is this so important to you now though? Why is this so important to you now? Now, what word did I emphasize? This. So what does the prospect's brain start to think? Why this, whatever that is, the thing, is so important to them now. Okay. So let's say if I'm selling, like I said, let's go back to that last example. Let's say if I sold, uh, you know, marketing, I'm a marketing agent, I'm selling leads to individuals or companies. And let's say the leads are the thing. They're like, I need a higher quality lead. Okay. But having the higher quality lead, why is that so important to you now? What did I just emphasize? That or this? Now they're thinking why the lead, the higher quality lead is important to them. If I sold life insurance, the same thing. This, whatever it is, if I sold cybersecurity, the thing, if I sold some type of SaaS product that helped, you know, associations, you know, get rid of their manual process for judging contents because now it's automated, the, this is what they're thinking now. Why this is so important to them now. Now look at this. This is the same exact question. Take a look at what I'm going to emphasize now. Okay, but why is this why is this so important to you now though? Why is this so important to you now? 
What word are they now going to think? Why it's important now, like right now today. So it's a timing thing. I now have the prospect's brain thinking, not why is this the thing important, but why is it important now? I literally can change the way the brain of the prospect works by emphasizing a certain word and having a verbal pause between that word. Now, take a look. You probably didn't notice that I paused right before the question. Okay, but why is this so important to you now, though? Why would I pause right there? Why would I have what is called a verbal pause? Why would I have a verbal pause right before the word I want their brain to think about? What does that do? What does a verbal pause cause the prospect's brain to do right before the word? It causes them to internalize this word right here. It causes them to think deeper about the question I just asked. Do you know one of the biggest reasons why you ask questions and your prospects give you vague surface level generalized answers? Do you know what the biggest reason is? is? Because you ask the question so fast, the prospect has no time to internalize what you just asked. Let's say you're walking into a furniture store, a car dealership, salesperson comes out, hey, welcome into the store today. How can I help you? Just looking. Do you know why? Ask the question so fast. The prospect has no time to think and they give you a knee jerk answer. Hey, hey, welcome in the store today. Are you uh, are you guys out just kind of looking around? See, I slowed down. Yeah, we're just looking. Yeah. Do you know what you're do you know what you're possibly looking for? OK, causes them to think deeper about the question I'm asking. OK, verbal pausing. OK. You always want to verbal. OK, but why is this so important to you now? Why is this so important to you now, though? Why is it so important to you now? See, verbal pause right before the words you want them to internalize and think deeper about. Does that make sense to everybody? Jeremy, give me reps. Let's work out a deal. Give you reps now. We train reps. All right, there you go. All right, hope that helped you. Now, we are going to go live tomorrow. Well, actually, no, we're not going live tomorrow. Do you know why we're not going live tomorrow? Because I will be on a flight. I have a mastermind out in Boise, Idaho. Can't tell you with who, but it's me and some, you know, the big boys, the big boys and girls. Anyways, mastermind with uh, 10, 10 business owners in some different spaces to kind of learn from each other. So we won't go live tomorrow. Now, here's, can I, can I, can I? ask you something T type in me if i can ask you something what if they say well it's not that important now well mitch that means you didn't build a gap before you asked that question you can't just randomly ask that question okay and if you ask it in this tone okay but why is this so important to you now george well i mean it's not that important Okay, but why is that so important to you now, though? See, my tone will dictate how they open up or not. But if I just randomly ask that probing question in a wrong place, then it wouldn't make any sense at all, right? You'd want to ask it more in problem awareness and solution awareness. You can't ask that in the beginning. You build no gap. All right, can I ask you something? Type in me if I can ask you a question. One second. i got a meeting right now I'm running late for. You guys are always holding me back. All right. In the comments, type in how much money you want to start averaging per month in commissions. Okay. So now that varies depending on your industry. Some of you might be in more B2B enterprise and you've got high bases and low commissions, which I would renegotiate that. When I was in Two of the four industries I trained in an enterprise, I negotiated no base and way higher commissions. Because why? Oh, because I knew and I trusted in my sales ability, right? 
I didn't want a low, I didn't want a high base. Jeez, that would limit me. So type in how much you really, no, actually type in how much you need to make in commissions every month. With commissions and base, type, type in in the chat how much you really need to make. Let's just start there. Type in how much in the chat you really need to make. Somebody said 35,000, 50,000, 2,500 to start, 10,000. Ross says 100,000 per month. Good Lord, Ross, you're like there. 8,000 said Alan, 10,000, 30,000, 50,000. Some of you are, are blowing up here on Instagram, 50,000, 4,000, 9,000, 25,000. Okay, a lot of different answers there. 20 to 30,000 in real estate. The real beauty said that. Uh, 25,000, Tinny. 8,000 window replacement. Jason, big industry retraining. Kamara, 50s, uh, lots of, okay, 500. Okay, now, underneath that number, that you just typed in that you really need to make. Type in how much you really want to make. So underneath what you typed in of what you need to make, type in what you really want to make. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, not a second more. Type in what you really want to make. <laughs> not just need. Thirty thousand, fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, one million, forty-five thousand a month, one billion. Okay, let's. You're not going to make one billion dollars a month yet. You, you, you know, there's a saying that goes, "You get paid what you deserve to get paid." You don't deserve to get paid one billion dollars a month because you haven't done the work or learned the skills to make that yet. Neither have I. If I'm being real, you want to make a hundred thousand a month. Do you deserve to make a hundred thousand a month? Have you done the knowledge and the skill sets and sales you would need to learn to make a hundred thousand a month? Then you don't deserve to. You haven't put in the work to learn the skills to make that five hundred thousand a month. Fifty thousand would be great. Have you done the work to acquire the skills that would be necessary to make that much money as a salesperson? If you haven't, that means you don't deserve that, right? Okay, now, can I ask you a second question? That number you just typed in the chat that you really want to make, how the hell are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? No, I'm literally asking, how are you going to do it? Let's say you said you want to, let's say just an example, you said you wanted to make 25,000 a month in commissions consistently. And let's say you're making 10,000 a month now or 5,000 a month now. How are you going to go from six grand a month to 20,000 a month? Are you going to work three times as many hours every day? No, that's not realistic. You already work eight to 12 hours a day. How are you going to work 18 to 24 hours a day? That's just stupid. So if you, if you want to make that type of income as a salesperson or a business owner, whatever you do, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to acquire a much higher level of sales ability than what you currently possess. Am I right? You have to acquire a much higher level of advanced questioning than what you've currently learned. Would I be right? You have to acquire a much higher level of objection prevention than what you currently know. Am I right? You have to acquire a much higher level of learning how to get your prospects to overcome their objections than what you currently have learned, right? You have to acquire a much higher level of advanced tonality than what you currently have learned. Would I be right? Now, for you who typed in the income that you want to make, message me directly right now. What's the number one reason why individual salespeople and companies come to seventh level? What's the number one reason? Because they obviously want us to train them how to acquire that type of advanced sales ability they currently do not possess. 
So if you actually want to make the money you typed in, message me directly right now. If you're on Instagram, message me directly right now. If you're in the Facebook group sales revolution, message me directly right now. If you're in my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you can't message me on that platform. I won't respond back. My team won't respond back. You'll have to join the Facebook group here. That's on the banner right below me here on StreamYard, salesrevolution.pro. Salesrevolution.pro. Now, if you can't figure out how to message me, which, hey, two years ago, I didn't know how to message anybody. I never even got on social media. I didn't even have an Instagram account two years ago. You probably don't know that. You didn't even have an Instagram account two years ago. Started Instagram January of 2020, no, 2022. Good Lord. Zero followers. Now we have almost 600,000. There you go. So message me directly. Now, if you don't know how to message me in the comments, post hashtag NEPQ, post hashtag NEPQ. You won't get angry if you spell it wrong. And either myself or someone on our team will message you back details. Now, when we message you back details, because there's, you know, there's over, there's about 200 of you on here between YouTube and the Facebook group. And there's still about 160, uh, 60, 161 of you here on IG. So we'll probably have at least, uh, probably almost half of you though, probably message me realistically. I can't message back you know, 180 people here, 200 people myself. So people on my uh, social media team and myself will message you back. Now, when, when people message you back, do you want to do yourself a favor? Do you want to open up and tell our team what's really going on? Or are you going to stay closed off? Like, you know, everything there is to know about selling. Which one are you going to do? You have high ego. I make a hundred grand a year. I know everything there is to know about selling. Or are you going to maybe like humble yourself and like say, maybe I don't know everything. Maybe I can learn how to sell more. Because I can assure you, we have clients in your space that make three to five times what you are. That started probably worse than you did. So when they ask you questions about your industry, what you feel like you're saying or maybe not asking or not understanding with your tone that's causing a lot of your prospects to run the other way. Are you going to be real with them or are you going to stay surface level to protect your ego? Which one is going to get you the skill level so you can sell more and make more money and help more prospects? Just a suggestion. All right, everybody, we love you. No live tomorrow. What do I think of Grant Cardone's sales courses? I don't know. I've never taken Grant Cardone's sales courses. I'm sure he's an awesome guy. I've just never been through his training. I'm just a boring behavioral science geek, so I tend to stay on the psychology side of human behavior. Maybe Grant does too. I just don't know. I've never been in his sales courses. He's a great marketer for sure. I've seen a lot of his ads. Okay, one of his offices is just right down the road from our USA headquarters here in Scottsdale. I like his building. The 10X is pretty cool. Okay, everybody. We love you guys. Message me directly if you want to learn how to sell more. <laughs> we'll show you different training products. We have like 36 different training courses now. We don't just have one with one price. We have 36 different ones. So they'll find out more details. You'll even be allowed to book with one of our account managers. They'll go through the different training programs. And once they understand what type of income you're at now compared to where you want to be, they will put you in, they'll suggest the right training program for you to get you the quickest ROI based on your current skill level. Okay. All right. We love you guys. We will see you next week. I will go live next week inside the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. Over and out, stay out of trouble. See you soon.